Hello and welcome to this completely unplanned, off-the-cuff video all about bread. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I am slightly losing my voice. I've got this horrible summer cold ever since the weekend. But I simply felt compelled to make a, a brief video answering the dozens, hundreds of questions that are being sent my way at the moment about a news story coming out of Jordan, where supposedly they found evidence of bread dating back 14,400 years, and a Tufian hunter-gatherer site. And I'll come back to the Tufians in just a moment. And this is blowing some people's minds. Oh, you know, some articles are saying, the paleo diet was never a thing. Ah, oh, what shall we do? And there's cats and dogs living together, total pandemonium out there. And uh, the thing is, though, the paleo diet never really was actually one thing. And I have touched on this in the past uh, when it comes to some paleo products. So the natural question is, whose paleolithic does this bar represent? Whose could it be? How could it be all those thousands of years ago? You see, even if we only count ourselves, homo sapiens, never mind the humans who came before us, or humans like Neanderthals, the, the Paleolithic is 290-ish thousand years of humanity moving around various continents, trying various types of food and preparing that food in various ways. Uh, in that sense, there never was a Paleo diet. In some respects, the Paleo diet is a very modern idea, and it is actually still intact. It's perfectly possible still to imagine a time before bread, before carbs, or these complex carbs that we, that we force into our modern diets. This, this, this idea is still intact. You can still run with it if you want to. No pun intended there. <laughs> but in reality, Paleolithic people over those millennia ate all manner of food, and some of it did look a lot like bread. Now, the Natufian have long been thought to be very special. If we were going to find pre-farming people eating bread, this was going to be one of those places, because they lived a, a, a slightly more rooted, semi-nomadic lifestyle than other hunter-gatherer groups, or even the hunter-gatherer groups that sometimes prehistorians like to create in their mind's eye when they think about the Mesolithic and the late Mesolithic, just before farming. These guys were hunter-gatherers. They also fished a lot and, and took full advantage of nuts and berries and seeds around them. But they also cultivated little garden-like areas, little meadows, that, 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 that contained useful plants and crops. This was clearly a strategy, a way of, of keeping plants close to you that were going to be useful, a sort of an incipient way of, of, of thinking about the world that was a bit different. Instead of you having to go through the landscape to the thing that you wanted, bring the thing to you. It's the, it's the beginning of sort of agricultural process in that sense, and that sort of mindset. And what has been identified previously is that, is that they may even have been altering the crops by harvesting them. By using a basket, for example, to harvest early wheat-like crops, sort of proto-grains. The, uh, the, 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 the plants that they kept um, and that, that were able to sort of keep their form as they were being harvested uh, had a slightly more solid structure. They didn't sort of come apart as the basket passed through the grass. And so, when they came to replant, that material, replant some of those, a portion of those grains, what they were doing was making grain bit by bit uh, more dense. Basically they were changing the plant, making it so that they required harvesting in order to be scattered. The wind was no longer strong enough to do it. So the, the Natufian has for a long time been one of those places and this news in some respects is not surprising to archaeologists. However, I can absolutely understand how it is that people who have done a bit of reading about health plans and life ways and the history of, of, of the food that we eat uh, might have been convinced that there was a time that was purer, more natural, if you will, a time before bread, especially the sort of food that we associate with mass consumerism and the modern agro-economy, the modern life path that, that's sold to so many people in the Western world. But even before that smoking gun, smoking crumb, <laughs> smoking crumb evidence, it was strongly suspected that the Natufian were likely eating bread products. This has just been really nice confirmation. This hasn't come out of nowhere. 
Uh, and frankly, actually, amongst hunter-gatherer groups, it's long been known and, and, and demonstrated that flatbreads, patty-like sort of cakes almost, cooked on flat rocks, uh, are, are, are common, made out of nuts, seeds, berries, uh, other dense tubers, this kind of thing. You can mash this stuff up and out comes something a bit like a pudding, a bit like a cake, a bit like bread. These things are part of the, the real global paleolithic multi-faceted diet and, and it's important that, that more people know that. So this archaeological news story is rightly getting attention and it's also raising some eyebrows and that's a good thing. Uh, it's been really popular. I, I mean one of the articles I shared on the Archaeosuit Facebook page was very quickly shared again more than 300 times, 400 times even. And in some of those reposts and reshares people were saying yeah a bit like an onion article this isn't it essentially that it's that it's somehow fake news that it that it's it's maybe a spoof someone's satire of archaeology and as surprising as it may well be it's not archaeology is absolutely all about finding what's new about the past shattering old models and creating new good ideas and in this case we have a brilliant idea and a brilliant way to highlight the various ways people lived before farming. Anyway, I'm going to go inside before I completely lose my voice. <coughs> As ever guys, until next time, do take care. Bye bye.